Okay, we're on exam number two, question number 21. First question is, what is or are the y-intercepts of this problem over here? And let's break the work down for you. There's not much work to this problem over here. What are you going to do? Well, to get the, um, the y-intercept, set x to be 0. And what would you get over here? Just plug in, you get 1 on top, minus 4 on bottom, so minus 1 quarter. Put a little box on it. I'm done with that question. Next question is, what are the x-intercepts? Now, looking at it, you might want to say minus 1, but unfortunately, that would not work because you'd have a division by 0. So the answer over here is none. All right? It's not minus 1, by the way, because that would result in a division by 0. Uh, what's the domain of the problem? It's pretty easy. It's all real numbers. However, x cannot be equal to minus 1. <coughs> that produces a 0 in the second factor. And the other number is x cannot be equal to... That's going to be 4 thirds. It's okay to write the answer this way. However, if you want to use the interval, the interval is going to be from minus infinity up to minus 1, union minus 1 up to 4 thirds, union 4 thirds to infinity. Put a little box in that. Either answer is acceptable, by the way. Now, what's equation of horizontal last toe? There's going to be a little bit of work here, but not much. I'm going to write this over here limit as x goes towards infinity of the function f of x. Well, I'm looking at those, uh, you know, the, the leading coefficients here. Um, and it's a square on top, square on bottom. Leading coefficient is uh, 1 on top, 3 on bottom. So it's going to be 1 third. You also write down the limit as x goes towards minus infinity. And that's of f of x. That's also equal to 1 third, right? What does this give us? It gives us a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1 third. That gets boxed. All right, the next thing is the vertical asymptotes. There could be a little work over here, but I want to point out the vertical asymptote, there's only going to be one because it doesn't occur at minus one. That's what's called a removable discontinuity. So there's only going to be one. I'll write it down for you. And that's going to be x equals four-thirds. That's where the bottom becomes zero. But I do want to go through the work. All right, and the work is going to be uh, necessary to get full credit. So limit as x goes to four-thirds from the right side. And I have to write down the limit as x goes to 4 thirds from the left side of f of x. The way we're going to do that is going to do sign analysis, it's going to simple sign analysis. And one of the numbers I'm looking at is 4 thirds. The other number I'm looking at is minus 1. Now, although I'm not really concerned about the minus 1 at this point, I am concerned about the 4 thirds and right and left of it. Now, so this is why you're choosing those numbers. That's where the problem takes on the zeros on top at minus 1, and the zeros on bottom occur at 4 thirds and minus 1. And what do you just plug it in? That's all you have to do. So I'm going to say, if you took a number after 4 thirds, I don't know, 1,000, plug it in, what are you going to get? Positive number. Now what I want to do is I want to take a number between minus 1 and 4 thirds, and 0 is a good choice, by the way, and what are you going to get? A negative number. So what do I know? I know from the left side, it's going to be minus infinity. And from the right side, it's going to be plus infinity. And now I'm done. I got that. Right? What's the range of it? Range is more difficult. And what I mean by more difficult, you may want to draw a picture of it. But I think at this point, you're, you're probably getting a, a little better at um, you know, determining um, the range of the problem by um, just looking at the function itself, by the way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a clear statement. It, it has something to do with all the real numbers. But there's certain numbers that are not going to happen, by the way. And I want to point out the number that's definitely not going to happen is that removal of discontinuity um, at minus 1. So I'm going to say this thing over here equals, I'm going to cancel x plus 1 off, 3x minus 4, and you get x plus 1. That's provided x is not equal to minus 1. Now, if I do this over here, I'm going to say that gives me a 0. And that will be a point that I have to remove now. So I'm going to say the function cannot equal a 0. I'm going to say that. The next thing I'm going to say is the function can equal, and I'm going to look at that horizontal asymptote now, and that was 1 third. All right. Now, if you want to, you can go through the work of trying to solve this thing for one third, and I'm going to say it's not going to work out for you. So I'm going to say I'm going to exclude that from it. F of x does not equal one third. If you want to write down intervals, though, the intervals are going to look like this: minus infinity up to zero, union zero to one third, union uh, one third to infinity. Put a little box in this, indicating that's fine, or a box in this over here. I just want to briefly go through why this is not one-third. So if you write this down, you get x squared plus 2x 
plus 1, 3 x squared minus x minus 4 equals 1 third. And you clear the fraction. What do you get? 3 x squared plus 6 x plus 3. Sorry about that. And over here, you can get 3 x squared uh, minus x minus 4. You know, maybe I misspoke, by the way. So let me just, uh, maybe I have to revise myself. Uh, the 3x squared disappears over here, and then you get 6x plus 3, and then you get minus x minus 4. Maybe I should revise myself. I'm, I'm saying it can't be 1 third, and I'm thinking to myself it can be 1 third now. And what do you get there? 7x and 3, uh, that's going to be minus 7. x equals minus, oh, it can't be that. And why is that? That would produce a zero divisor. So this is good. We're okay now. Let's go to the next one. The next one uh, basically says uh, you got a root of the polynomial, and um, if, if, if one of the roots is uh, root 2, I know the other uh, root would be minus root 2. So i got factors now. And the question is, what, what's remaining over here? There's a variety of ways of doing it. One thing you do is multiply this out, by the way, and you would get x squared. Let's see, you get x squared minus 2, right, if you multiply that out. There's a missing factor over there. If you want to do it by long division, you can. Or if you just want to think about it, that's fine too. And thinking about it does require a little bit more work. But I do know it's a linear factor at this point. So if I, if I say a linear factor, what I say? Oh, well, x, because I get an x cubed over here. And then, um, you know, looking at the 6, I would say, oh, gee, you got to be minus 3 then. All right? Now, granted, if you want to do long division, you can. And the long division would look like, um, let me just make sure I'm saying that right, by the way. The long division would be uh, x squared. Uh, minus 2 would be divided into that polynomial, which would be x cubed uh, minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 6. And you could do the long division. And what are you going to get? x. That's going to give you x cubed minus 2x squared. <coughs> you get minus x squared. Uh, let's see. Minus 2x and then a, a, a plus 6, right? And let's keep moving along. Let's see if I did that right. Did I do something wrong here? Let me just say, oh, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. I just noticed it. And I said, the reason I noticed it, I'm not getting a zero remainder if I did that. And I apologize. Let's put that down. And what do you get there? You do get x cubed, but then you get minus 2x. When you subtract, what do you get? Minus 3x squared plus 6. What do you get over here? Minus 3, which will give you minus 3x squared plus 6, remainder 0. So you still get the x minus 3, by the way. So let's take a look at the answer, okay? And it looks like they want me to list the roots. And these are the three roots over here. This looks good. And these are the three factors over here. All right? Choice A. All right, let's go to the next one. 22, 23, I mean. This is a complex number problem. Pretty easy. What do you get? I'm going to write it in terms of squares, by the way. That's going to be I squared to the uh, 30th power, because 30 times 2 is 60, minus 2I squared. And that's going to be to the 75th power, because 2 times 75 is 150, minus 5. This one's a little more difficult, by the way. I still see an I squared. I'm going to say uh, 41, all right? Now, 41 times 2 is 82. All right, keep going. Plus 6. I'm still going to say I squared. I get a little more difficult. I'm looking at this thing over here. I'm going to say 54. That gives me 108. I need another I to get 109. And then minus 2I squared. And I'm going to say 30. And I have an I left over, all right? So let's keep going. What do you get over here? I squared is minus 1, and minus 1 to the 30th power is just 1. So I get uh, 3 over here. Next up, minus. I squared is minus 1, but to the 75th power, which is a negative number, it would be minus 1. So what do we get over here? Plus 2. What do you get over here? I'm going to put the minus down. I squared, again, is minus 1. When you put it to the 41st power, odd number, you get a negative number, minus 1. So it's going to be plus 5. Next up, plus 6. I squared is minus 1 to the 54th power, even number. It's going to be plus 1, so I get I over here, minus, let's write this down, I squared is minus 1, 30th power, still 1, I get I over here. What do you get there? 3, 2, 10, and 6 minus 2 is 4I. All right, that one's done. Let's go to the next question, and the next question is factor it completely. And, you know, you know, when you're factoring something completely, I would just basically say, you know, maybe I could do it by grouping. Maybe I can do it by um, uh, uh, rational root theorem or, you know, it's a, a trial and error. Whatever works for you, by the way. But I'm going to look at this thing and say, you know, maybe the, the, the way to approach this one over here is by just doing a couple of test roots on the problem over here. Just give me one second. And I realize that um, sometimes this might be related to another problem I just did in the sheet, by the way. But I, I don't know. Is this related to the other problem? 
Now, it sure does look like that, doesn't it? But it's not the same one. So I'm looking at this thing over here, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, um, what roots would I choose? And the roots looking at this one over here, um, I'm going to say by the rational root theorem, right? So I'm going to say F. I'm going to try... I'm going to try one, because one looks like a really good candidate, by the way. And what do you get? Two plus three minus eight plus three. And what do I get there? Two plus three, that's uh, going to be five. And five plus three is eight. Yeah, this does give me zero, by the way. So now what do I know? I know that this guy has a factor, and that factor would be x minus one. And the reason for that, the root is one. All right, I'm getting real close now. And what I'm going to say over here, looking at it, I can certainly know what the first term of this expression is. It's going to be quadratic. It's going to be 2x squared. And I certainly know the last term. That has to be minus 3, by the way. All right? Now, my question over here is that I don't know the middle term, and I'm going to do that by long division. But there are other ways to do it. I don't think this is the only way to do something. And I'll divide in. That's 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 3. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, you know, so-called match, by the way. So I'm going to say 2x squared. That gives me 2x cubed uh, minus 2x squared. This gives me 5x squared minus 8x plus 3. Again, another matching problem. What's nice about this? They're, they're finger numbers. This is going to be 5x, 5x squared, and then you're going to get minus 5x. I got to subtract. That's minus 3x plus 3. And then I'm going to say minus 3 over here. So now I, I got this over here. Let me get my little eraser out. I'll erase this over here. And now I know that this over here is going to be, uh, let's see, plus 5x now. However, they did say factor it completely. So I'm looking at this thing over here, and I want to factor it completely, which means take that quadratic and factor that. All right? I'm going to say 2x and x, relatively simple. If it's integer, it's simple. And then I get a 3 and a 1. I'll put this over here. And then I'm going to say plus 3 minus 1. Let me see if that works. 2x squared. I get 6 minus 1, which is 5x, and I do get minus 3. So this is my answer for this one over here. Again, the answer, x minus 1, 2x minus 1, x plus 3. They said factor completely. That's done. Let's look at this one over here. This one says divide, all right? What's the remainder when you divide? All right, let's put this down, x plus 4. By the way, there's other ways of doing it. I just want to point out that long division is not a bad way of approaching the problem. And what I'm going to do here, it's a matching game. I'm going to say x squared. That gives me x cubed. That gives me 4x squared. I'm going to subtract. I get 15x squared plus 114x. Don't be alarmed. These are not difficult numbers. Uh, next up, I'm going to say 15. Now, 15x. What do you get? 15x squared. And now 15 times 4 is 60x. Again, it's not an alarming number, but again, if you trouble with this, I don't know, do some uh, grade school arithmetic over there. That's 54. And then you get 218. And lo and behold, I can match that too by putting 54. What do you get? 54x. And 4 times 54, that's 216. And what do you get there for a remainder? You get 2. So the remainder is 2. I look in the key, and I do see that. All right, let's keep moving. This one says find a polynomial with real coefficients that has these following zeros over here. So um, I notice that all the answers are cubic, so I'll go with that. So I'm going to say x plus 10. And then if this is a root of a real coefficient polynomial, the other root would have to be minus 2i. So it's x minus 2i, x plus 2i. All right, let me multiply this out because I notice that these are multiplied out. x plus 10. And what do you get here? You get x squared. Uh, the two middle terms disappear, by the way, and you get minus 4i squared. All right, what do you get there? x plus 10. Sorry about that. What does this give me? Uh, let's see. Uh, x squared plus 4. I'm going to multiply this thing. You get x cubed plus 4x plus 10x squared plus 40. I'm going to write in a different order. x cubed plus 10x squared plus 4x plus 40. Time to look at the K to see if I see that answer. And the answer that I'm looking for is hopefully on that list, by the way. If it's not, though, I'd assume I made an error somewhere. So I'm looking around for it, and I believe it's this one here, but I want to double check, by the way. So I see the X cubed, I see the 10X squared, 4X, and I see the 40. 
All right, next one, the limit problem. And my understanding about limit problems is I, I'd certainly like to you know, maybe do some analysis on it. And to do that, I'm kind of looking at, uh, there's kind of two places where this thing's gonna be taking on a zero. And that's the, the, where the bottom, by the top, if you look at it, and I wanna point out what, what I mean by that, if I just look at the discriminant at the top, by the way, that's gonna be uh, nine minus four times one times five. It's complex, by the way. So the top's always positive, by the way. So I'm really looking at the bottom. The bottom takes on zero, plus or minus one. Now I'm going towards one from the right and left. So I'm gonna be over here, take a test point, like zero, for example, and you would get a negative number. Now if I take a number after one, I don't know, like a million, plug it in, it's a positive number. Now what do I know over here? Relatively simple. What do I know? I'm dividing by zero, but the top is some finite positive number. Overall, what am I doing from the right side? It's plus dividing by that zero, infinity. All right, that one's done. All right, let me go to the next question. I'm getting really close to the end of it. And the, the next one over here, it says, you know, the graph of it. And this is problem number 28. Let me see how many questions there are. 28, 29. Oh, only that. Let me take a look. So this one over here, um, I got two more questions to get through. And the bottom line is, I want to answer the questions. Over here, it says, in the xy plane, the graph of intersects the x-axis in how many different places? Well, I'm gonna draw a picture of this, and I'm gonna say at zero, certainly. It's right there. Now this one over here is gonna be plus or minus the square root of two. All right, that's not so bad. I gotta look at this guy over here, and again, the question is, does that ever equal zero? Well, I'd use quadratic formula because I don't think I could do that with my fingers, and the quadratic formula is going to be uh, two here, minus one. It's not so bad, right? plus or minus, let's see, one minus four. Well, that's complex, so it's only three places. Only three, all right, I got them over there. All right, let's go to number 29. Number 29 says find the sum of the smallest and largest x-intercepts of the graph. All right, so we have to get the x-intercepts over here. So um, let's take a look, and I'm gonna factor it. And the first thing I'd factor out is probably a three x squared. And what do you get there? Well, let's take a look. You're gonna get x squared minus 5x plus six. Looks like a pretty simple question, by the way. Three x squared, x and x. Uh, I'm gonna say two and three, minus, minus. I'm gonna check it though. That gives me x squared, minus three minus two is minus five, and minus two times minus three is plus six. So I'm gonna list the x-intercepts, by the way. And these are the roots, by the way. Zero, zero, that comes from this. Then I get a two and I get a three. All right, what did they say? The sum of the smallest and largest. This is the smallest and that's the largest. Zero plus three is equal to three. I look for the K and the answer is C. We are now done. Thank you for paying attention and I hope you did well in the exam. I think it was a pretty simple exam though. But again, you may not agree with that. And, you know, bring it to our attentions if you think something's difficult or, or not uh, something you've seen before in classroom. All right, thank you.